This is my favorite wheel and tire setup for the Suron. These rims are actually the ones from the Supermoto conversion. They normally come with street tires. What I love about the Supermoto setup is the rear wheel is actually wider than the front. The stock setup is both the same exact size, 19 by 1.4. The front Supermotos are 17 by 1.6, and the rears are 17 by 2.15. The tires I'm running are the Shinko 241 Trials tires. It's a 17 by 3 inch rear, and a 17 by 2.75 front. The reason I don't like running these 17 inch street tires is because sometimes I'm hitting the grass or some light trails. I actually let my son ride this as well so the lowered seat height makes it easier for him to handle. First thing I do is get it on ratchet straps just to secure it. Then get the caliper off. There's literally just two bolts. Loosen these 8mm allens. There's one on each side. Then loosen these two pinch bolts. So there's two on each side. And you're just going to want to wiggle that spindle out. And don't lose these spacers. You can just zip tie them onto a spoke. There's a weight difference when you're doing this. Stock front is 9.6 pounds and the new setup is 10.6. Make sure you don't over tighten this nut when you're getting it back in. If you tighten it too much, it'll snap just like this. It's the pinch bolts that actually hold this axle in place. Before you get the caliper back on, go ahead and clean the rotor with some brake cleaner and a rag. Then just get this hand tight for now. Rear, same thing. Two bolts for the caliper. Then I find the master link and use pliers to get it off. Get it out of the way. The rear just has one 17 mil. And a 6 mil Allen on the other side. Push that pin through. Here's the weight difference for the rear, 11.6 for the stock, 14.4 for the 17s. Yeah, this setup is about five pounds heavier. Don't forget to transfer the spacers from the OEM wheels to the 17s. Your rear caliper bracket fits over the spacer on the rear. All right, so the stock sprocket is a 48 tooth and the 17 inch sprocket is a 42 tooth. So the chain is gonna be smaller. Here's a little trick that I do to help feed the new chain. I'll connect them and I'll just pull it through. There's a notch here for the caliper bracket. It sits like that. And go ahead and loosen the chain tensioner and push it forward because we're gonna have to readjust the chain tension anyway. These axle blocks only go in one way, so take note. The way you connect the master link is important. The side that opens needs to be facing away from the direction that the chain is being pulled. All right, now feed the chain towards the top. Pull off this axle block. This will give you more room. You could just feed it mostly in and then spin the top higher and you're on. Now you can put the axle block back and if it doesn't want to go back it's too tight and you need to push the tensioner a little bit more forward. Alright this is a freaking e-bike so don't get too caught up in this next step. To be as accurate as possible you're going to want to take a caliper and measure the distance on the tensioner on both ends. And I like about an inch or so of play. Just keep in mind that when you go to tighten this bolt the swing arm gets compressed and tightens the chain a little bit more. Clean that rear rotor one more time. Here's your pro tip. The best way that I've found to align these calipers is by using a flashlight and just looking through, getting it straight, spinning the wheel and tightening down the bolts. Here's a before shot with the 19 inch wheels. There she is after. It sits a little bit lower than before, but not as aggressive. I really love this setup.